seriously. Like, I'm not really a numbers guy. It sounds rigid to me. But let's just play with something for a minute. As the number of faces, I mean, I don't know how many faces I'm looking at. There's a lot of folks here. This is a pretty big seating area. You got pretty many. You got several hundred folks, right? 400 some. Let's just say 400 people in some way So a seed of love, send a message of love, do something by the Spirit of God concerning another life and touch somebody in the Lord just once a day, once every other day, 400 of us times 30 days. Duh! Times six months. Times a year. Times lifestyle. (laughs) What do you think about that? You think that would be pretty amazing? wonder if you would grow in confidence and step out and realize, wow, that wasn't so bad. Wow, I don't know what I was nervous about. Wow, that was kind of easy, just loving them. And all of a sudden, you settle into this place where you're not uptight, and you actually get impressions, and you hear words, and, and you just get impressions. You just feel like, I don't know why I keep looking at you, and I keep thinking about ankle. Is there something going on with your ankle? Well, my ankle's fused. Why are you asking me about my ankle? Oh. Wouldn't that be sweet? And then you're like, doo, 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 doo. and you say, well, I was just getting, I just felt, when I looked at you, I heard the word, I go, well, what are you talking about? Why? My, I feel like, I feel like the Lord showed me ankle and I want to pray for you. Well, it's fused. He's the Lord. Yeah? Wonder if that would start happening with us just because we're positioned and we're thinking that way. Wouldn't that be sweet? Times like 400. (laughs) That's how you touch a community. That's how God touches a region. We're praying for an outpouring, and he's saying, how about pouring out? (laughs) Serious. But if you get caught up with people stuff and issues, and he said, and I feel, and life's tough, and what about... You're going to get all distracted from why he's in us and why we're really on the planet. And if you just make it about you, I'm telling you, it's going to be a lonely, sad place. I was in a down south preaching, and this young man, while I was preaching, raised his hand right in the middle of my great sermon. And I took a risk. I called on him. I figured if it's muddy, we'll clean it up. So we'll just, we'll go for it. I said, what's going on, young man? He said... I feel like I'm getting a revelation while you're talking, like God is speaking to my heart. I said, what? He stood up. He said, if I'm hearing you right, there's like no bad days in Jesus, just only opportunities to shine. And I went, I can just get on a plane and go home. That's just, you got it. It's so simple. I was at Walmart, and I I got this guy a bunch of clothes. He didn't have anything, so I'm in the position to do that. I have a ministry account. It didn't even come out of my pocket. Jesus paid for it. He's awesome. People blessed me, so I blessed him. That's how it works. People sewed into my life and said, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for the impact. I pray you just use this for whatever. Awesome. You bump into this guy. He needs some clothes. We just How about coming to Walmart with me? Why would you do this for me? Because I want to. Because you're in need. I don't need a good reason. That's you're in need and you're a human being. You don't even know me. Do I have to? I know who you are. You're created for God's image. There's a time to be born and you're on the planet. Your life's probably the will of God, huh? I bet he knew you before you were known. I bet he numbered your days and saw you before you were seen. I bet you fit Psalms 139. I bet he formed you in your mother's womb. Whether you know him or not, I bet he knows you. So we probably ought to just go to Walmart and get it over with. (laughs) We get to Walmart. The guy's in a bad place, man. He's homeless for 40 years. Like, I'm talking 40 years living on the streets. That's a long time. Why is he living on the streets 40 years? I found out in my heart, Holy Spirit told me. Taking him back to town, back home, to the square. That he hardened his heart 40 years ago, in his 20s, mad at people, mad at government, got political, got whatever he got, 
hardened his heart and decided I'll skip out of taxes, I'll skip, skip out of this and that, and every time I scam a person, I feel like I'm winning because I don't like people. He chose to live that way. And you think, well, God wouldn't give him the time of day. Are you kidding? God wants to deliver him from that delusion. I don't care if he's 60-some now. He has a destiny. His life matters. And Jesus shed his blood for the man. You know how I met him? I saw him crossing an alley. I was two blocks away getting in my car, and it looked like he was limping, and it looked like he had a cast on his foot. He's two blocks away. I'm just by myself. I don't have a team. I'm not ministering. It's not an outreach. It's not a show. It's not... I just care about the man. I could have got in my car and drove away, but I chose to run up there two blocks and catch him. He was an easy target. He could hardly walk. <laughs> I chased a scooter downtown in my hometown. That girl was cruising. She beat traffic. I had to skip through cars. It took me like four blocks to catch that lady. I said, hey. She finally looked back. I said, I'm chasing you. She said, I'm sorry. She stopped the scooter. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, it was, I live in a busy town. I couldn't even get, get to her, you know. She said, why are you chasing me? I said, because I want to pray for you because you have a rheumatoid arthritis. That's why you're in the chair. True. She said, I do, it is rheumatoid, it's, it's really, really hindering me. How did you know? I said, well, there's a lot of reasons you could be in the chair. You could have injured your leg, you could have had a car wreck, you could have been recovering from a surgery. But the Lord told me what it was. And I thought it was worth chasing you down and asking you. And asking if you'd let me pray for you. And honey, seeing that the Lord told me, probably ought to just let me. <laughs> I'm telling you, people are, they'll just go, yeah, okay. Because I knew what was wrong with her without talking to her. Wasn't that sweet? So she let me pray. I watched her get out of the scooter, cry, hug me, felt no effects of rheumatoid. And I thought, great, I don't have to chase your scooter anymore. No, just, I didn't care about chasing you. I'm just having fun. But this guy was easy to catch. Because when I got up to him, he was intoxicated. And he was sitting right around the corner on a porch. And he's covered with feces, and he smells really bad. And I went, wow, this guy doesn't have a cast. That's a bunch of rags on his foot. And I said, hey, man. Hey, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? I'm all right. You've been drinking, huh? Oh, yeah, I've been drinking my bottle. Yeah, I can tell you're drinking, buddy. Listen, man. I thought you were wearing a cast. I ran the whole way up the alley. I was going to pray for your foot. I thought you had a cast on. But that ain't a cast. He said, that's my shoe. He said, look, my other shoe. He had his foot hanging wide open, tore from toe to heel. I said, man, you're homeless, obviously, huh? Yeah. I said, listen, can you be here tomorrow at 10? I won't pick you up. I can't right now. I, I got a commitment. I told people I'd be somewhere. I got to talk to some young folks. I can't. I got to be there. But I'll pick you up tomorrow if you'll meet me here. Why? just want to help you. Why? Because you're a human, and I want to. Be here tomorrow, will you? All right. Oh, he was nowhere around at 10 o'clock. I couldn't find him. I had to look for him. I looked for quite a while. But I was diligent. And I found him. Back in alley on a porch. I said, hey, you. You were supposed to meet me out there. And I, hey. He remembered. He's already intoxicated. It's morning. Hey, but he knew. He said, you came back. I said, I told you I would. That might, might not mean much coming from some folks. But if I tell you I'm coming back, I'm coming back. I said, come on, I need you to get in my truck. I want to take you for a ride. He said, where are we going? We're going to Walmart. Why? I want to get you some things, man. You need some stuff. Why would you do that? I said, why wouldn't I? We asked the wrong questions. I said, why wouldn't I? You're a human being and you're in need. He just looked at me funny and I laughed. I got him in the car. I said, you don't understand the gospel at all, do you? And on the way to Walmart, I told him all about Jesus and God's good love. And why God made man and who we are because of him. He's just listening. He's looking around. I'm just a talking away. I get him into Walmart, man. It's like splitting the sea. That boy's coming through Walmart. 
feces smelling. I don't want to disrupt. I just want to help him. But I'm thinking, this is tough. People don't even know what to do with him, man. They're just peeling away like, oh, my. He's a human. He's hurting. Religious people say, what's the big deal? Why are you helping him? You got to get him off that bottle and get him to quit drinking. If he quit drinking, maybe God could bless him. Oh, you slack and low of understanding. Probably ought to zip for a little bit and get some wisdom. That's religion. That's a, that's a hard heart talking. You didn't change nothing to get saved. Jesus changed you. Why are you putting that on this man? Maybe you changing him that way ain't the answer. Maybe the goodness of God and the love of God changes people. Well, he's just going to get drunk. He's just going to poop on the new pants. What's the big deal? Maybe he needs a seed sown into his life. Maybe he needs to start believing different. Maybe you got to put something in him that God starts working with. Because if you sit back with all the answers for his life and never love him, you might just find out that you're a goat, not a sheep. Because sheep, when they see people hungry, they feed them. When they see people naked, they clothe them. When they see people thirsty, they give them a drink. When they see them in prison, they visit. When they're sick, they visit. The only difference between sheep and goats, the one group lived beyond themselves and the others didn't. It didn't say they didn't pray a prayer or go to church. They just didn't love people. He said, when you did it to these, you did it to me. When you didn't do it to these, you didn't do it to me. He really relates to people, doesn't he? I didn't say that to be mean. Don't get quiet on me in a bad way. <laughs> it's all about loving people. Yeah. It's not about getting something from God. It's about giving who God is away. For freely you've received, freely give. Now, you might not be able to financially take him to Walmart. You're not compared to me. I'm in that position. I'll do it. I won't put that on you. Jesus knows. But there's ways we can love one another. There just is. So I get in there and we get him some pants. And we're dressing the guy. It was fun. It was a journey. It was so hilarious. I'm taking off this nasty stuff off of him. Trying not to disrupt nobody. And I've, I'm carrying his ball of nasty stuff. You don't have to. But don't bother me about it. Okay? I'm okay with it. There's something in me called the Holy Ghost. And he's just all right carrying that man's clothes. I ain't telling you to, but leave me alone if I'm all right. I'm carrying his stuff. He's walking. He's shopping, man. He's just feeling happy. He just can't believe I'm getting him all stuff. So we get back to the shoes. It was priceless. He put on, he, he grabbed these size 12 starters, black and red starter sneakers. He's like, oh. I got to have these. He just wanted to. I said, man, they are some big dogs, man. You, know, you ain't got no 12s. I said, it don't matter. They'll fit. I said, yeah, they'll fit. And then some. Come on, man. I said, what size feet do you got? And I tried to measure up his feet, laid some shoes. We got a pair of shoes on him that fit. Problem is, we got to take off these rags off his feet. We got to put socks on him. And his feet ain't, his foot ain't good. It's oozing and. The rags are nasty. You have no idea. It was his shoe. He was using it for a shoe. His feet are blistering. They're not good, man. So you're believing. You're praying over him. We get those rags off. I got a problem. I'm in Walmart, public place. I'm going to have somebody freaking out soon. I'm like, Jesus, I need your mercy. So I'm gathering these clothes, and I'm putting them on a ball. And I look, and here goes the kid. He's 18. I ask questions. How old are you, buddy? He's 18. He's just carrying his big old garbage can. He went right by me. I said, hey, I need you. I said, hey, man, is that full? He said, no, I'm just emptying it. I mean, it got some room. Why? Come on, man, I need your help, please. I'll do all the work. I just need you to come. What's going on? Ah, I got this guy. He's homeless. It's really nasty clothes and stuff. I don't want to offend your customers. I'm just trying to help him. I just met him downtown, but it's difficult because this stuff's really nasty, man. And people are just, in this day and age, freaked out by this stuff. So this just, let me slip it in your can. You won't have to touch nothing. I'll do it. And you just get rid of it. He said, awesome. He said, you don't even know him? 
I said, no. He said, why would you do it? I said, you know, that's the question he asked me. I said, here's what I ask him. I said, why wouldn't I? He's a human and he's in need. And I have the means to help. Why wouldn't I? 18 years old, he goes. <laughs> exactly what he did. He just looked at me and went. Like, you white-haired dude, that's cool. I get that. 18 years old, that touches me. So he got all his nasties. Poof, you should have seen Billy in his starters. He, he got some swag now. He's like. He don't even look drunk anymore, man. He's just looking down. He's like, I got brand new sneakers. We get almost to the cash register. I got him dressed. I got all the receipts in my hand. He's wearing all the new stuff <laughs> and carrying like a couple extra under stuff, you know. We go by these rack of khaki pants. He goes, whoa. He's like a little kid. He's looking at his new jeans. He's looking at his khakis. See, I didn't get a chance to give this guy a shower, right? So he goes, I said, you like them, Billy? Do you think I can trade these out and get these instead? I said, I don't think that'll probably work. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what. If you can hold on to them and protect them and keep them safe, why don't you just keep both pair? Really? Really? Yeah. Come on, let's go. I mean, Walmart's amazing. I dressed this dude and got him stuff. It's like 70 bucks. I'm like, whoa! Should have brought a carload of homeless, you know? We get to the cash register, the lady, she's ringing up the receipts. I said, honey, I, don't, I hope I'm not causing a problem. I'm kind of, I never really did it this way, but this guy's homeless, just met him. He's wearing all this stuff. And I got all the receipts, and we threw all his nasty stuff in the back in a garbage can. One of your young workers helped me. And I just want to pay for it. I promise you it's legit and everything's straight up. She said, oh, no, it's not a problem. She was one of them great. She just, ting, ting, talking. And she said, so you just met the guy? You don't know him? I said, just met him downtown. She said, why would you do all this for him? I said, you know, it seems to be the going question. <laughs> it's like we have to have this incredible reason to love people. I didn't say that to her, but it's, that's what I'm, I'm just making that comment to you guys. But I said to her, I laughed and I said, honey, that's the going question. He asked me that question on the way here. Your young worker in the back, 18 year old guy pushing the guard. He asked me the same question. Now you're asking. I'm going to say to you what I said to them. I said, honey, why wouldn't I look at him? He's a human being. He's in need, and I have the time and the means to help him. I don't need a better reason than that. Watch what she said. Five seconds. Cashier. Whoa. Watch. I'm not exaggerating this an ounce. Whoa. Sir, you know, if the whole world thought like that, the world would be different. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Ah! Uh? <laughs> I thought you got in five seconds what I fly all over the country <laughs> to accomplish for a whole weekend. You got it in five seconds at the cash register with one little living example. Come on, we can all have a Billy. It doesn't mean you have to start a ministry to the homeless and get a 501c3 and all that stuff and get a business card. Just love somebody as you go. Yeah. We can all have a Billy. That would be 400 Billies. Yeah. A week and a half later, 400 more Billies. Wow. We get in the car. He looks like a new man, but he's got a ways to go. He needed a shower. I'm not just being real. It, it just covered his scent for a little. But he's in my car and he's precious to God. 
And we're driving and I started to get understanding about his life. It was such a powerful moment. And I said, hey, man, I feel like God's showing me some things about you that you got really hurt and really hard in your late 20s. That you're homeless by choice. He just starts, it looks like he's going to manifest, you know. And I said, listen to me, man. Bam, bam. And, I, and he's just, he's looking out the window, choking back. He hasn't cried. This dude hasn't cried for 40 years. God is on him. He's in trouble. And I got my hand on his shoulder. I mean it, man. And I'm just speaking over him. And I'm talking to him. And, and I said, I know why you're struggling with me so much. Because you're used to scamming people and using people and telling them lies to get things from them. And every time you do it, you feel like you're getting even. But you didn't scam me. I free will walked up to you out of the blue and I've been helping you ever since. And it's freaking you out. Because you ain't using me. I love you and care for you. And it's a whole new world for you. But it's the world I live in called the kingdom of God. We're driving and talking. You say, you're taking this kind of time for one homeless dude? Jesus shed his blood. I think I can take him to Walmart. Amen. You say, that's radical. Jesus dying on the cross for you and me is radical. Amen. Me taking him to Walmart's a given. Amen. I've pulled my car over to pray for the sick and they make a big deal. I say, you parked your car to pray for me? Stop, don't put that in the category of radical. Let me tell you radical. About 2,000 years ago, this innocent man who was God came in the flesh, fulfilled what man felt and died on the cross and paid the price for every guilty man that ever was and rose from the dead and justified people that put their faith in him. That, my friends, radical. Amen. Stop in my car to pray for you. No brainer. We get into town. This guy is choking back tears. I'm talking to him. I'm just being me. I'm lighthearted. I get in town. I shake his shoulder and say, well, Billy, the ride's up, dude. You got to get out. And I don't know that I'll ever see you again, man. I'm leaving town here, but I got one more commitment and I'm actually running close. We had plenty of time, but I probably need to get heading where I need to go. So I'm not late. And then I got to get, get, get home. I said, so thanks, man. Thanks for letting me help you. Thanks for going with me. Thanks for listening. Just thanks, man, for being with me for this hour and a half this morning. It was about an hour and a half total. And uh, he just sat in my truck and didn't get out. And I said, Billy, I need you to get out of my truck, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I got a place I got to be. I need you to uh, get out. He's just sitting there staring. It was kind of like, what do you do? And I was like, hey, man. And he hee-hawed a little. He, you got to understand, this man never looked me in the eyes the whole time. He's looking down. He's looking out the window. Even when he talked, he's looking straight ahead. He's never did this. Honey, he didn't do this at all. The whole morning. I said, is there something you want to say? Is there something on your heart? Because if it is, just say it, man. Because honestly, I'm not being rude. I got to leave, but I, I care. But I need you to speak up and get, just say what you need to say. And man, I'll see you later. He lifts his head and looks me straight in the eyes. And he says, an hour and a half hanging out with the heart of God. 40 years of bitterness and deception. An hour and a half with the heart of God. He looks up and says, you know, he, he, this guy isn't talking sentences. He ain't saying nothing. He says, you know, I think I can say, I love you. And the Spirit of God came upon me and said, see, Dan, no one loves me first except they see my first love. He said my own would even tell him to stop drinking, get rid of the unforgiveness, change, clean up. I'm telling you, keep loving the world. Keep loving the world. Just keep loving the world. No one 
loves him first. Except they see his first love. All these religious phrases came through my head as I'm sitting in the car. I'm crying out of control. I can't even drive. I'm a blubbering mess. I'm sitting there bawling, saying, Billy, get out of my truck. Go. <laughs> You're done, man. Go. You wrecked me. His heart was already opening. And all these phrases, well, if he'd just stopped drinking, well, he left his heart get hard for so long. No wonder he's just reaping what he sows. Well, he needs to put down that bottle so Jesus can bless him. In fact, I don't think the Lord would touch him with a 10-foot pole. No, you wouldn't if you think that way. Jesus has been waiting to through you. You just don't understand. All them phrases shot through me in a moment, and God was teaching me what to never allow myself to become in the world of religion. Yeah? Well, what's the big deal, brother? He's just going to get drunk again tonight. What? The kingdom of God as if a man scatters seed. How about if we stop projecting and having all the answers and why don't we start sowing into men's lives so something can grow? If you don't put corn seed in the ground, you'll never get corn. Nobody was ever so spiritual. They're looking out the window, where's the beans? And never put no beans in the ground. The kingdom of God is as if a man Scatter seed. Yeah? I don't know why I told you that story. I never know what I'm doing. I'm like, what am I doing? I hope it helped you. I hope it convicted you. It happened a long time ago, but it's a relevant story to me. It never gets old. I didn't turn it into a homeless ministry. I'm not against a homeless ministry. Let's just be careful now. Everything doesn't have to always be a ministry. Why isn't it just as you go? Just as you go. Just as you go. Just love somebody. Amen?